What's going on, y'all? Welcome to the Blown Coverage Fantasy Football Podcast. If you're new to the channel, I'm Wave of Wire Queen. Welcome and thanks for tuning in. Today's episode, we're going to talk about my top three sophomores who are absolute studs and are going to have excellent production for you in 2022 in fantasy football. These three studs, because they are, are going to excel and produce at a high level this season. Let's get right into it, guys. To the Blown Coverage Fantasy Football Podcast with Waver Wire Queen. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We have a lot of great content, which is going to help you prepare for your upcoming draft. And we have content which will help you throughout the fantasy football season so you can compete at the highest level every week and achieve your ultimate goal to compete for a fantasy football championship because that is simply what it's all about. Let's talk about my top three sophomores who are going to have excellent production for you in 2022. Coming in at number three, one of my favorite wide receivers. And I say that about the mobile. He's one of my faves because he is Kadarius Tony with the New York Giants, my favorite um, football team. Kadarius Tony has so much damn talent and potential. Last season didn't go as planned. A lot of injuries. He showed us some flashes that he can be that guy and be our number one wide receiver. He's going late in your fantasy football draft, so you don't have to reach and draft him early. But you should prioritize him because I think it's going down in 2022 for Kadarius Tony. I expect him to produce, and I'm hoping that he is the Giants' number one receiver at the beginning of the season throughout the season and at the end of the season, ultimately um, have the best stats as the Giants' lead wide receiver. That is possible. I expect this um, new coaching staff to come in and set Kadarius Tony up for success and make sure he is in position to uh, show his a talent. He is not Tyreek Hill, so don't y'all say I said he's Tyreek Hill, but he has Tyreek Hill-type speed and potential. I mean, we know he's not faster than Tyreek Hill, so y'all know what I said, but don't say I said something different. No. But again, with Tony, the talent is there. He just needs to stay healthy and be put in position to be successful. You have to utilize him and play to his strengths, and I do believe they're going to do that this season, okay? It's going to happen. The old coaching staff didn't utilize him. I don't even think they knew what to do with Kadarius Tony, but the new group, they know what to do. And guess what, guys? He is playing and participating in training camp, which is the most important thing for us. We want to know that he's healthy because he was very inconsistent health-wise last season. We don't have a large sample size to really discuss and dissect about him um, last season, but Overall, if you take a, a, a look at the small sample size in certain games, look at um, week five versus the Cowboys. Uh, we lost. Who cares? But he had 10 wrecks, 189 um, receiving yards. He had a long for 38, no touchdowns, but he was tremendous, okay? Tremendous. Not saying he's going to come out here and get 10 catches and 180 yard, 189 yards every week, but the potential is there. Look at the game, um, the game against the Saints, week four. Six receptions, 78 yards, potential, potential. When he has the ball in his hands, he's going to make things happen, similar to uh, a Tyreek Hill. And again, I said there's not a, a, a lot statistically for us to, to even look at, but again, it is there. Ultimately, um, he appeared in 10 games, started for – 420 yards, 139 receptions, um, no touchdowns. I expect them to utilize him more in the receiving game and um, 
rushing. He's gonna uh, run. Will get some opportunities where he's able to 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 to, to use his talent and 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 run the football. Get him a jet sweep or two. Some get that ball in his hands because he's going to produce for us. We know that the key is for health. Health is wealth. Availability is the most important thing. And if you don't get to draft Kadarius Tony, you will regret it. In a dynasty league, trust, please draft him with confidence because he is going to, to come along at some point. And even if, say, Daniel Jones does not finish the season off as the starting quarterback, Tyrod Taylor will be able to get him involved to a certain extent. And then, and again, from a dynasty, a, fan, a dynasty standpoint, you got to look to the future. And the future can be bright if he is able to remain healthy. Now, let's talk about my second favorite sophomore, Javante Williams, running back with the Denver Broncos. That is right. One of the key things is, He's got a damn quarterback, y'all. When you got a quarterback, you got a daggone chance. Russell Wilson is his quarterback. That is a, a huge step, a huge upgrade from having um, Teddy and, 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 and Drew as his quarterback. And that is important. Although that offensive line is still suspect. However, he was able to produce um, solid stats, not as the lead back, and sharing the field split. 50-50 carries at a certain point in time with um, Melvin Gordon and still produced some stats. Again, he's going to be the lead back this season. He has a quarterback, a legit one. And again, produced solid numbers as a rookie. And again, I can't stress enough that he's going to be the lead back. Um, you've got to also factor in that Gordon is – is there he resigned and he's going to be the number two so i do believe jamonte will have uh more opportunities to carry the ball and be on the field than melvin gordon because he is now the main guy but gordon is still there so he's gonna cut into some of that production but i do believe that it's going down in 2022 for jamonte he has everything in place to help him succeed i'm hoping that that offensive line is gonna be better but just having someone like Russell Wilson who has the knowledge and is going to set him up in position to be um, productive is going to help Javante and it's going to help us in fantasy. If you have him, it's going to help you. So draft him with confidence. Let's talk a little bit about his stats. Russian, 203 attempts, 903 yards and four touchdowns. I expect Javante Williams to go over 1,000 yards this season and have more than four touchdowns. I'm looking at maybe eight touchdowns. So over a thousand yards, eight touchdowns. And in the receiving, uh, from a receiving aspect, he had 43 receptions, 316 yards, and four touchdowns. I'm expecting him to stay within that same range of, of 43, maybe 45 receptions, and hopefully he can get those yardage to three, between 350 and 400. I'm not going to say he's going to be some great PPR back because the numbers are not truly there, but I do believe he will improve as a receiving back this season and be excellent. But that offensive line is still suspect as hell. And we got to look at that offensive line like, y'all better block for him. Especially if you have him as your uh, running back. Coming in at number one, we got Travis Etienne running back with the Jacksonville Jaguars. This is essentially going to be his uh, – rookie year because he missed all of the 2021 season due to a foot injury. I expect him to have a hell of a season. He has a great rapport with Trevor Lawrence, played in college together. So they definitely have that, that, that relationship. They're working hard together. They have said that um, Travis has looked great so far um, during training camp. James Robinson is no longer on the physically unable to perform list. However, we simply do not know if he's going to be ready to start the season. There are still some doubts about that. I do believe that Travis is the better um, running back out of the two. He's the best uh, all around running back on the Jaguars roster. And he should be on the field a whole lot. And then if, say, Robinson has any setbacks, that's going to be even more time for um, ETN. 
just keep in mind that, you know, this is, again, pretty much his, 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 his rookie season. Um, the Jaguars offensive line should be improved. Still not going to be the greatest thing, but should be improved. I love Travis as a PPR running back. He is being drafted, obviously, ahead of, of Robinson, and he should be. Because again, I feel like overall he is the better running back. He has the the potential, especially from a dynasty standpoint. He will be your starter running back for for several years, and he's going to to outperform um, Robinson. And again, we don't know if Robinson's going to be ready to start the season, but what we do know is Travis is going to be ready, and he's going to produce, and he is going to be on the field on on any third down situation and any passing situation, which really makes him appealing in a PPR league. So if you don't trust him in a standard league, you better trust him in a PPR league. And again, I do expect him to have an exceptional season as a sophomore, AKA sort of like a, a, his rookie season because he didn't play at all last year. He is going to produce and if you do take the chance on him in your redraft league, especially in a dynasty league, it's going to pay off. People will be reaching out to you for trades. However, we're not trading him in a dynasty league. We're not trading him at all. But if you do decide to make that choice, make sure you get all you can for him. Because right now, people may lowball you because he didn't play last year. Although you're hearing a lot of great things about him, they like he didn't play. You know, hey, they still got Robinson. But you know better than that. So you don't make the move but if you do decide to make the trade you tax him because if he gets out there and he plays very well and you traded him for pretty much a pack of um, peanuts then it's not going to be a good look for you and that's going to be taking away some valuable production from your team so travis a travis etn do not trade him keep him or try to acquire him because this is going to be a hell of a season for him. And if you have Trevor Lawrence, try to pair him with um, Travis Etienne because I do believe they'll be connecting a lot on those short passes, third down situations. And they're going to be in a lot of them. <laughs> All right, y'all, leave some comments and let me know which one of these sophomores you feel is going to have a better season this upcoming year in fantasy football. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. We have a lot of great content, which is going to help you prepare for your upcoming drafts and prepare for your season and help you throughout the year so you can stay ahead of your competition and achieve your ultimate goal in fantasy football. The ultimate goal is to be the last team standing and win your damn fantasy football league. Tune in. Next episode, we're going to do a special um, mock draft on Monday, and this is going to be a two quarterback league. This is not going to be a super flex. It's going to be a two quarterback league, one tight end. It's going to have a kicker and a defense. So tune in for that mock draft. And this is going to be standard. It's not going to be PPR because there are some uh, leagues that aren't PPR and we have to make sure that you are prepared for your standard fantasy football draft. Y'all have a great week. I'll see you on Monday. I'll see you during the mock. Thanks for listening to the Blown Coverage Fantasy Football Podcast. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Blown Coverage Fantasy Football Podcast.